Welcome, fellow explorers, to historic adventures. Today, we embark on a journey through time as we unravel the tales of Hardwick Hall. Get ready to step into the past where every corner echoes with history. Let the adventure begin! Hardwick Old Hall stands as a testament to the innovative architectural spirit of the Tudor era. Constructed between 1587 and 1596, this distinguished residence was commissioned by Bess of Hardwick, a woman of considerable wealth and influential connections during the Elizabethan period. Serving as a pioneering example of modern mansion design, the Old Hall incorporated cutting-edge Italian architectural principles of its time. Today, although the old hall stands as an impressive yet empty shell, it preserves the grandeur that mirrors Bess's elevated societal status and ambitious vision. Bess of Hardwick, renowned not only for her architectural endeavours, but also for a series of notable marriages, emerged into the world in 1527, born into a family of minor gentry. At the tender age of 15, she entered matrimony with Robert Barlow, only to face the tragedy of his untimely demise a mere year later. In 1547, Bess encountered and wed Sir William Cavendish, a mature widower aged 40 and a father of three. Collaboratively, they acquired the estate of Chatsworth in Derbyshire, where they erected a new residence that would become their principal country abode. The sudden passing of Sir William in 1557 marked a turning point, leading Bess to her third marriage with Sir William S. Lowe, a prominent figure in Queen Elizabeth's court. This union not only solidified her social standing, but also cultivated a close friendship with the Queen herself. Tragedy struck again in 1565 with the abrupt demise of Sir William S. Louis, who bequeathed his entire estate to Bess. Subsequently, she entered into her fourth marriage, this time with George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury, a man of considerable wealth. Bess orchestrated strategic unions between her son Henry and Grace Talbot, as well as her daughter Mary and Gilbert, the heir to Shrewsbury intricately weaving together the destinies of the two affluent families. Following the tumultuous dissolution of her fourth marriage in 1584, Bess sought refuge from Chatsworth and retreated to her familial estate at Hardwick. As a countess, she aspired to a residence more magnificent than her father's medieval manor house on the ground. Consequently, she initiated the construction of Hardwick Old Hall in 1587,
The upper floors of this architectural endeavour featured two wings housing staterooms meticulously designed for formal entertaining. Illuminated by towering windows, these rooms offered commanding vistas of the expansive landscape. Each suite of staterooms boasted its own grand chamber, showcasing a harmonious blend of opulence and practicality. Despite its exposure to the elements, Hardwick Old Hall preserves numerous original plaster over mantel. Testament to Bess's enduring vision, in 1590, even before the completion of the Old Hall, she embarked on the construction of another edifice adjacent to it, the New Hall. This time, she enlisted the expertise of a seasoned architect, Robert Smithson. Contrary to conventional expectations, the Old Hall was not forsaken in favour of the new structure. Instead, the two were conceived as complementary entities akin to the harmonious wings of a single architectural masterpiece. In 1608, the esteemed Bess met her demise, leaving the reins of Hardwick in the capable hands of her son, William Cavendish. This marked the inception of the Cavendish lineage, subsequently ascending to the prestigious title of Dukes of Devonshire. To this day, the legacy endures at the Chatsworth Estate, an acquisition made by Bess and her father, As time unfolded, the Dukes of Devonshire developed a preference for Chatsworth, prompting the partial dismantling of the old hall in the 1750s, leading to its gradual descent into a state of picturesque ruin. In a transformative endeavour, the open interior of the estate saw the introduction of specimen trees in 1793. The custodianship of the Hardwick estate underwent a notable transition in 1959 when it was entrusted to the National Trust. Concurrently, the Ministry of Works assumed responsibility for the guardianship of the Old Hall, embarking on a substantial programme of stabilisation works. In the 1980s, meticulous efforts were undertaken to cleanse the smoke-blackened stonework, while the 1990s witnessed the construction of a timber viewing platform within the Hill Great Chamber. This addition facilitated an up-close exploration of the remarkable plasterwork, breathing new life into the historical tapestry of Hardwick. In the year 2022, a significant investment of 1.5 million was allocated to the preservation and conservation efforts of the Grade 1 listed Tudor building. The focus of this endeavour was to ensure the longevity of Hardwick Old Hall, a structure that, despite its current state as a mere shell, stands as a testament to the remarkable ingenuity exhibited during the Tudor period. Noteworthy for its innovative design, the Old Hall serves as a poignant reflection of the esteemed status and ambitious vision of Bess of Hardwick.
The custodianship of Hardwick Old Hall was assumed in the year 1959, marking the initiation of a dedicated commitment to its upkeep. Over the years, this commitment translated into meticulous maintenance routines, with a notable restoration effort in the 1980s involving the thorough cleansing of its stonework. Further enhancements were introduced in the 1990s, exemplified by the addition of viewing platforms that provided visitors with an enriched experience of this historic edifice. Presently, a collaborative effort with teams of specialists is underway with the primary objective of stabilizing the structural condition of Hardwick Old Hall for the benefit of future generations. This concerted initiative seeks not only to preserve the tangible remnants of the Tudor era, but also to foster an enduring legacy that transcends the passage of time. In this architectural edifice, a diverse array of materials has endured the test of time, comprising timber, stone, concrete and ornamental plasterwork. Each of these materials necessitates a tailored and specialised methodology in preservation efforts. Collaboratively, we are engaging with ecologists to safeguard the habitat of cherished resident bats demonstrating a conscientious approach to our environment. Additionally, meticulous attention is being devoted to preserving the integrity of vital drainage systems without compromising any concealed archaeological remnants that may lie beneath the surface. Hardwick Hall, situated in Derbyshire, stands as a remarkable country estate hailing from the Elizabethan era, serving as a prime exemplar of the Elizabethan prodigy house architectural style. Constructed between the years 1590 and 1597, under the commission of Bess of Hardwick, the esteemed residence was meticulously designed by the renowned architect Robert Smithson, a prominent practitioner of the Renaissance style. Hardwick Hall represents an early manifestation of the English interpretation of this architectural trend, which emanated from Florence and gained popularity in Britain during a period when fortifying domestic dwellings was no longer a requisite, both legally and practically. Enduring centuries under the ownership of the Cavendish family, subsequently passing through the line of the Earl of Devonshire and the Duke of Devonshire, the house underwent a significant transition in 1956 when ownership was transferred to the Treasury, ultimately finding its custodian in the National Trust in 1959. At the time of acquisition, the hall had fallen into a state of disrepair, necessitating stabilisation and a subsequent meticulous restoration effort. Today, Hardwick Hall stands as a testament to its rich history and architectural significance, welcoming the public to explore its grandeur. In 2019, the hall hosted 298,000 293 visitors attesting to its enduring appeal and historical allure. Perched atop a hill between Chesterfield and Mansfield, with a commanding view of the Derbyshire countryside, Hardwick Hall stands as a testament to the architectural brilliance of Robert Smithson in the late 16th century. 
commissioned by Bess of Hardwick, the Countess of Shrewsbury and a direct ancestor of the Dukes of Devonshire, this imposing residence remained in the possession of her descendants until the mid-20th century. Bess of Hardwick, the wealthiest woman in England after Queen Elizabeth I conceived Hardwick Hall as a striking manifestation of her affluence and influence, noteworthy for its unusually large and abundant windows in an era when glass was a luxury, the edifice earned the moniker Hardwick Hall, more glass than wall. Ingeniously, the chimneys were integrated into the internal walls, allowing for expansive windows without compromising the structural integrity of the exterior. The architectural innovation extended beyond mere aesthetics, reflecting new concepts in both domestic architecture and the contemporary lifestyle within grand houses. Notably, Hardwick departed from convention by sighting the Great Hall along the central axis of the house, a departure from the typical perpendicular alignment to the entrance. Distinctive features include three main stories, each boasting a higher ceiling than the one below, symbolising the societal status of the occupants ascending from the least noble on the bottom to the grandest on the topmost level. A majestic stone staircase, winding its way up, leads to the staterooms on the second floor, featuring one of the largest long galleries found in any English house. The tapestry, draped, great chamber on this level remains remarkably preserved, adorned with a spectacular plaster frieze depicting vivid hunting scenes. The architectural influence of Hardwick extended beyond its confines. In March 1608, the Earl of Salisbury, in the midst of planning new constructions at Hatfield House, sought inspiration from Bess's son-in-law, the Earl of Shrewsbury requesting a road draught of Hardwick. Hardwick, although a notable residence, was just one among Bess's many abodes, each acquired through her four marriages, which significantly enhanced her wealth. Bess's origins trace back to her father's manor house on the site of the present-day dilapidated old hall at Hardwick contrasting with the enduring grandeur of the new hall that stands today. Following the demise of Bess in 1608, ownership of the estate transitioned to her son, William Cavendish, 1st Earl of Devonshire. The legacy continued through generations, culminating in William's great-grandson being bestowed the title of 1st Duke of Devonshire in 1694. Chatsworth, another architectural marvel conceived by Bess, became the primary residence for the Devonshires, relegating Hardwick Hall to the status of a sporadic retreat for hunting and an occasional dower house. As a secondary abode, Hardwick Hall evaded the scrutiny of modernisers, undergoing minimal alterations post its construction. Notably, the eminent political philosopher Thomas Hobbes met his end at the hall in December 1679. In the preceding years, Hobbes had resided at Chatsworth House, also owned by William Cavendish, fostering a connection that spanned back to 1608 when he first tutored the young William Cavendish. Following Hobbes' demise, numerous manuscripts of the philosopher were discovered at Chatsworth House, further entwining the intellectual legacy with the grandeur of the Devonshire estate. In the nascent years of the 19th century, a deliberate effort was made to maintain and perpetuate the venerable ambience of Hardwick Hall. Situated discreetly at the rear, the unassuming 19th century service wing harmoniously blended into the architectural ensemble.
The year 1844 marked a significant milestone when William Cavendish, the sixth Duke of Devonshire, authored a publication entitled Handbook to Chatsworth and Hardwick. This privately printed tome meticulously chronicled the historical narrative of the esteemed Cavendish family's ownership and stewardship of their dual estate. In 1950, the unforeseen passing of the 10th Duke of Devonshire prompted a series of events that would significantly impact the estate. The subsequent death duties totaling a staggering 80 compelled the sale of numerous Devonshire assets and estate. During this period, Hardwick found itself under the occupancy of Evelyn, Duchess of Devonshire, the widow of the 9th Duke. In a strategic move to address the financial obligations arising from the death duties, the decision was made to transfer Hardwick House to HM Treasury in lieu of estate duty in 1956. This transfer marked a pivotal moment in the history of the estate. Subsequently, in 1959, HM Treasury entrusted the stewardship of Hardwick House to the National Trust, emphasizing its cultural and historical significance. Evelyn, Duchess of Devonshire, continued to reside in the house until her demise in 1960. Notably, her tenure was characterised by personal efforts to preserve the textiles within the house and the restoration of traditional rush matting. Regrettably, she stood as the final occupant of Hardwick House, leaving behind a legacy of conservation and cultural stewardship. Hardwick Hall, a historical masterpiece, boasts a substantial collection of embroideries predominantly originating from the late 16th century, with numerous pieces catalogued in the detailed 1601 inventory. Noteworthy among these textiles are those adorned with the monogram A's believed to be the handiwork of Bess herself. The house showcases a wealth of fine tapestries and furniture dating back to the 16th and 17th centuries, with a remarkable aspect being the inclusion of items meticulously listed in the 1601 inventory. Of particular significance is the Sea Dog Table, crafted around 1600, and the Eglantine Table, featuring an intricately inlaid top of interest to connoisseurs of musical history. Open to the public, Hardwick also boasts a splendid garden, replete with herbaceous borders, a vegetable and herb garden, and an orchard. The expansive grounds house the captivating ruins of Hardwick Old Hall, an earlier residence repurposed for guest and service accommodations after the construction of the new hall. Administered by English Heritage on behalf of the National Trust, the Old Hall offers a glimpse into its storied past. Lavish rooms adorned with ambitious plasterwork schemes, particularly above the fireplaces, still showcase impressive fragments, preserved with coatings and rain shields, despite the majority of the structure being unroofed. Both Hardwick Hall and the Old Hall hold the prestigious Grade 1 listing by Historic England, a testament to their historical and architectural significance. Renowned architectural historian Dan Cruikshank in 2006 handpicked Hardwick Hall as one of his top five choices for Britain's best buildings in a BBC documentary series. The hall, innovative in its era, later inspired the design of the main exhibition building at the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition serving as a model that seamlessly blended historicism with the contemporary use of expansive glass, it left an indelible mark on international expositions and fairs. 
In March 2012, a monumental 6.5 million restoration project concluded, culminating in the addition of a spacious restaurant. As of December 2020, three years of meticulous restoration efforts had been completed, with further plans for ongoing preservation and enhancement. In the annals of architectural history, Hardwick Hall stands as a storied testament to the evolution of design and its captivating role in various cultural production. Notably, the grandeur of Hardwick Hall served as the backdrop for the esteemed 10-part BBC series Mistress of Hardwick, which graced the screens in 1972. In the realm of television, the distinguished estate played a pivotal role in the 1978 Connections TV series. This production ingeniously used Hardwick Hall to elucidate a profound series of transformations in home design spurred by the climatic shifts of the Little Ice Age. The significance of Hardwick Hall extends beyond the small screen, as attested by its feature in the acclaimed 1985 TV documentary, Treasure Houses of Britain, this insightful portrayal underscored the historical and architectural richness encapsulated within the hallowed walls of Hardwick Hall. Fast forward to the realm of cinematic enchantment and Hardwick Hall emerges once again as a cinematic gem. In the 2010 film Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, part one, the grandeur of Hardwick Hall took centre stage, serving as the exterior and hosting select interior scenes for the iconic Malfoy Manor. Thus, from its historical roots to its cinematic allure, Hardwick Hall transcends time and medium, leaving an indelible mark on the tapestry of cultural and architectural heritage. In a world where shadows dance and whispers linger, there exists a place cloaked in mystery and veiled in the ethereal. Welcome to Hardwick Hall, where the walls hold secrets and the air hums with the echoes of the supernatural. As the moon casts its silvery glow upon the ancient stones, beware the creaking floorboards and the ghostly footsteps that tread where the living fear to wander. In the still of the night, spectral figures may emerge. Spectral figures may emerge, telling tales of bygone eras and untold sorrow. The flickering candlelight reveals more than just the grandeur of the hall. It exposes the phantoms that have chosen to linger in this timeless space. Whispers of lost loves, the rustle of silken skirts, and the distant wails of a forlorn soul may intertwine in a haunting symphony. For in the heart of darkness, there may be a glimmer of the extraordinary. Perhaps a friendly spirit lingers, offering a guiding hand through the tapestries of time. The line between the living and the spectral blurs and the mysteries of Hardwick Hall come alive in a dance of the supernatural. So, as you step into this realm where history meets the otherworldly, keep your senses keen and your spirit attuned. For in Hardwick Hall, the supernatural awaits, ready to reveal its enigmatic secrets to those who dare to listen. As the grandeur of Hardwick Hall fades behind you, a tapestry of memories woven with history and elegance, the journey continues beyond its magnificent wall. As you step into the embrace of the surrounding landscape, consider extending your adventure to the charming local shops and quaint farms that dot the countryside. 
Immerse yourself in the warmth of artisanal crafts, where each piece tells a story of craftsmanship passed through generations. Wander through the aisles of these hidden gems, where treasures await to be discovered, echoing the timeless beauty of Hardwick itself. And for a taste of the pastoral life, venture towards the local farms, where the Earth's bounty is celebrated in every harvest. Engage with the farmers, breathe in the scent of freshly ploughed fields, and perhaps savour the flavours of the region with locally sourced produce. So, as you bid adieu to the splendour of Hardwick Hall, let the allure of the nearby shops and farms beckon you towards new experiences and the simple pleasures that make each journey unforgettable. If you're hitting the road, first set your satnav's coordinates to S445QJ. That's the magic code that'll lead you straight to the gates of Hardwick Hall. Buckle up and get ready for some scenic views and perhaps a game of I Spy along the way. All aboard the adventure train. If you prefer the rhythmic sounds of railway tracks, catch a train to Chesterfield or Alfreton Station. From there, a short taxi ride will whisk you away to the doorstep of history at Hardwick Hall. For those with wings itching to soar, the nearest airport is East Midlands Airport. Once you've landed, the road to Hardwick Hall is just a scenic drive away. Rent a car, roll down the windows and let the English countryside welcome you. Sailors. Okay, maybe not sailors, but canal enthusiasts. Rejoice! Navigate the beautiful Chesterfield Canal, and you might find yourself docked just a stone's throw away from Hardwick Hall. Talk about arriving in style. As you approach the grandeur of Hardwick Hall, let the anticipation build. The sprawling landscapes and architectural marvels will soon unfold before your eyes, making the journey as memorable as the destination. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the historic beauty of Hardwick Hall. We hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. If you found this exploration of the past intriguing, consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more historic adventures. Stay tuned for more, and until next time, see you soon!